ഹലോ വെൽക്കം ടു ദ ഇ ശിക്ഷണ പ്രോഗ്രാം so this is professor kumar rao bringing you the lecture series on transmission and uh, distribution the fourth semester course uh, under vtu under the aegis of the e sectional program of vtu e learning center so in the last three sessions i had done some problems on uh, distribution systems so we saw how you can uh, reflect the power factor say with respect to the load end the extreme end voltage or with respect to the voltage at that particular bus or maybe even with respect to the sending end voltage and we had solved some problems so in this session i will uh, work out some more problem and uh, we will see what's the effect of neutral disconnection in the system so now let's consider a ring main problem so we have done a number of problems on radial distributors now we'll take a ring ring main distributor so i have a three phase ring main a b c d so what is a ring main so it starts at one end and you know it goes in a loop and comes back so this qualifies to be called a ring main so it is fed fed from end a at 11 kv here you can see at the arrow arrow is in into the network so that means it is feeding so this is the source and there are a number of loads so what do you have you have balanced loads so i can solve everything on a single phase equivalent so when the load is balanced system is balanced you can solve it using your basic uh, network theory uh, knowledge of uh, you know simple kcl kvl that is more than enough to solve the problems right so at b i have uh, 20 amperes at 0.9 pf lagging here okay and 40 amperes 0.707 pf lagging that's here at c and 30 amperes 0.8 pf lagging at d yo at d so you should be able to draw the figure yourself i told you from the data the first thing you have to do is draw the figure so you have a b c d just draw a loop i have drawn it this way you can draw it even as a circular loop no problem and the impedances of the various sections are given as follows a b is 2 plus j3 here section ab and bc is 2 plus j2 and cd is 3 plus j4 and da is 2 plus j3 right so determine the current in the various sections so you have four sections here ab bc cd and da so in each section determine the current and also the node voltages at b c and d node voltages at b c and d this is the problem so as i told you you can solve it using simple network theory let us see how it is done so you see if i take this node node a okay node a then i know the currents here so we start calculating the currents we'll see how it is done so first what i do let the current in section ab be x plus jy that's all here so let me take a different color yes so in this section i let the current be x plus j y here here it is x plus j y that is this current right so now assuming it is x plus j y it's fine 
So now I can find all the current. See here, this is the current leaving. So this is entering B. This is leaving B. So I can apply KCL at B and find out what is the current here. Now, again, I know this current. I know this current. So I can find out what is this current. And I know this. I know this. I can find this. And once I know these two, I can find out the supply current. Okay. Now I find only expressions. Because I don't know what is X plus J, Y. Fine. Let us see how what we can do. So the current in section AB is X plus J, Y. And what would it be here? So you see this is entering, this is leaving, and this is leaving. So X plus J, Y will be equal to 20 amperes at 0.9 PF lagging plus the current through section BC. Right? So the current in section BC is X plus J, Y minus 20 amperes at 0.9 PF lagging. Okay. So 0.9 minus J 0 0.4359. This is cos phi. Cos phi is 0.9. So this is sine phi. And why this minus? Can you tell? Can you recall? Yes. The minus is because it is lagging. Clear? So now what you do in such cases, you group the real part and the imaginary part. So here I have 20 into 0.9 is 18. So I have X minus 18 plus J Y and 20 into 0.4359. There's a minus here. So minus into minus becomes plus. Plus this works out to be 8.71. So this is the current in section BC. Next, here I know this is the current entering. And so this current would be this minus this by applying KCL at node C. So at node C, if I apply KCL, so the current in section CD, that is the other current which branches out from node C, is equal to the current entering. The current entering is the current in from section BC. So that is X minus 18 plus JY plus 8.71 minus the outgoing current at node C, which is 40 amperes at a power factor of 0 0.707. So this is cos phi and this is sine phi, one by root two. So when I do the simplification, I have here X, I get X, you already have X minus 18 and uh, be careful here. Right, so you have your 40 minus 40 into 0 0.707. So I get x minus totally, I get 46.28 plus j. I have here 8.71, and here again, this also becomes plus 40 into 0 0.707. So that works out to be plus 36.99. Now, come to node D. So at node D now. I know the current in section CD, the expression for that, right? So, and I know what is the current leaving here. So the current DA would be the current entering node D minus the current here, the tacked current here. So current in section DA is equal to X minus 46.28 plus J y plus 36.99 minus 30 into 0.8 minus j0.6. This is 30 amperes at a lagging power factor of 0.8. So now again, I simplify and I get this x minus 70.28 plus j5 into y plus 54.99. Now, I know the current in all my sections, right? The current in all the sections is known. Okay. So do I actually know it? No, because I know the values in terms of X and Y. But I don't know X and Y. So I have expressions for all the currents. Now what we will do, very simple. If I apply KVL, so I'll draw a loop here. Just follow my loop. If I draw the, if I take this loop, right, and apply KVL, again, see this loop, A, B, B, C, C, D, D, A. If I take this loop and apply KVL, so it should be zero, the voltages. So what would it be 
VAB, that is the drop in AB, plus VBC, plus VCD, plus VDA will be equal to zero, right? Because it's a loop and all the drops in the loop, when I add, it will be zero because there is no voltage rise. There is no, no source inside the loop. Now, what is the voltage drop in any section? The current into the impedance, simple, right? Okay, let's see. So voltage drop in section AB, the current is X plus JY, impedance is two plus J3. So you, you remember you have to add everything. So let us operate in rectangular coordinates. Let us continue to operate in rectangular coordinates. So here I have two X, then J squared is minus, minus three Y. So this is the real part. So as I said, let's continue with rectangular coordinates and the imaginary part. So here I have J3 into X. So I have J, 3X and I have JY into two, which is two Y. Yeah, so I have a voltage in section AB. Next, let's get a voltage drop in section BC. So this is the current and this is the voltage. Sorry, this is the impedance, okay? So again, I have here 2X and then here the real part. You club all the real parts and all the imaginary parts, right? And why this minus 2y? I have your jy into j2. So j squared is minus 2y. So be careful when you do this. And this is the voltage drop in section BC. Okay. I advise, sincerely advise all of you to have a pen, a paper and work it out. Very simple. Similarly, the drop in section CD is, this is the current in section CD and this is the impedance. Again, multiply and collect all the real part and the imaginary part. So this is the voltage drop in section CD. Then we have voltage drop in section DA. So this is the current and this is the impedance. So this is the total voltage drop in section DA. Right? So now I, have, now I have drops in all the four sections. So what is the KVL? VAB plus BC plus VCD plus VDA is equal to zero. Okay. So this is VAB, VBC. Okay. So you see now why we stuck to rectangular coordinates? It's easier. Mm -hmm. Then VCA is here and this is VB. Sorry, this is VCD and this is VDA is equal to zero. Be careful, your polarity should be in the same direction. So now I will take all the real paths. So 9x minus 12y minus 645.75. When I add all the real components and when I add the you know, imaginary components, I get 12x plus 9y minus 193.59. That is the imaginary uh, part. Here yeah, is equal to zero. So I have one, now you will ask, I have only one equation. I have to solve for two variables, x and y. But remember, a complex number is equal to zero only if, if and only if, both its real component and imaginary component, both are zero, right? So in essence, actually you have two equations, not one equation. So the real part, if I equate it to zero, when I equate the real part to zero, I get this 9x minus 12y minus 643. This is the real part equated to zero. Now this is the imaginary part equated to zero, imaginary part equated to zero. So you have two equations, two simple algebraic equations, right? So you have to solve it for X and Y. So this equation actually, uh, I have your nine X minus 12 Y minus is this, you can solve. 
on solving the two equations, I get x is equal to 36.15 and y is equal to minus 26.67. Now our complete problem is solved. How IAB is x plus jy. So this is x plus jy. This minus is because y is minus 26. Then IBC is X minus 18 plus JY plus 8.17. So I get IBC. Similarly, I get ICD and IDA. So we have got all the currents. So you see now I have got the actual values of all the currents. Clear? Next. So one part of the problem is solved. The currents in the various sections. Now, if you see, see, I have not used any concepts of distribution system or power systems. I have used simple KCL and KVL. That's all. Okay. So almost all the distribution problems, you can solve it with just KCL and KVL. Now, you are given the supply voltage at A is 11 kV. It's a three-phase system. And remember, all these are phase quantities. So 11 by root 3, I have to take the phase voltage is 6.35 kV. This is at the supply end. Where is it? Here, in this figure. Here. This voltage is 11 kV. Now I have to find the voltages at the other three buses, at B, C, and D. Okay. So what will be voltage at station B? It will be VA minus the drop in AB because I'm moving from station A to station B. So it will be the voltage of A, station A, minus the drop in the line AB. So it is... So I'm taking voltage A as reference. It is 6.35 kV. So that is 6,350 volts plus J0 minus, I have IAB. Okay, IAB is 36.15 minus J26.69 into ZAB is two plus J3. So I get 6198 minus at an angle of minus 0 0.508 degrees. Lesser, lesser than the supply voltage, obviously, because I have traveled. Next, what will be at station C? Station C will be VB minus IBC into ZBC. So I'm from B, I'm moving to C, right? So the voltage at C will be VB minus the drop in this line BC. So this is VB, what we just calculated. And this is IBC into ZBC. So this is 6125.79 minus J55.3. Can you see it's further reduced? 6126.03, it's further come down. Next, from C, I move to D. So it'll be, so the voltage at D will be VC minus the drop in the line DC. So VD is VC minus IC, VZCD. So this is VC. This is ICD and this is ZCD. So I get this. So problem is solved. Okay. So what I want you to um, notice here is that, you know, your voltage keeps changing as you move from one node to the other node. So I think we have solved enough uh, of problems in uh, distribution. I have solved almost eight to 10 uh, uh, problems. Um, we have covered different aspects. That's more than enough. And uh, now let's see what is the effect of disconnection of neutral in a three-phase four-wire system. So what happens in a three-phase four-wire system? You see, this is my supply. Okay. And then... my load. This is three phase, three wire. And when I connect the neutral, it becomes four wire. Right? It becomes four wire. Now we saw what is the advantage of a three phase, four wire. So let us say this is an industry and this is the input to, in, uh, to the industry. This is say from the transformer of the industry. So let us say this is a huge three phase motor. Now, if I have the neutral, I can connect single phase loads here. 
I can connect lighting load, fan, whatever I want, AC, small pump, so many things. So if the advantage of a four wire system is I can connect single phase loads also, which is very common. We'll be using both in the industry, we'll be using both three phase and single phase. So four wire systems are very, uh, very, very commonly used. So in a four wire system, you have a neutral conductor. So you see here, let me just again uh, take a different color. Okay. Say so we, we know this from, you know, say this is from your first year. This is IR. Okay. And uh, this is IY. And this is IB. Then let us say this is IN the neutral current okay so what is in what is the neutral current you apply kcl apply kcl at this junction at this junction apply kcl three currents are entering ir iy ib and neutral current is leaving so in will be equal to ir plus iy plus IB. IR plus IY plus IB. Under normal conditions, IR, IY, IB are balanced. So you know when I add, the sum will be zero. So under normal conditions, the neutral current will be very, very low. Be almost zero. Okay. Now, so three phase four wire systems have a neutral conductor. The neutral points of generators, transformers and loads are normally grounded. So this will be grounded. So what happens? This will also be grounded. So it gives you a common reference. So it's actually like you have connected these two again through the ground, right? So a neutral wire allows the three phase system to use a higher voltage while still supporting lower voltage for single phase appliances. That's what I told you. Because between the line and the neutral, you will get one third voltage. One by root three, sorry, not one third, one by root three. So you can get a lower voltage with the same system. You don't have to have another system. That's the advantage of a three phase four wire. So what is a broken neutral? We'll see. If the neutral is opened, either at the supply end or on the distribution, uh, either at its source side of the distribution transformer, generator, or at the load side. So what happens? See, here it may get open. Here, at the source side of the distribution transformer. Or at the load, it may get disconnected at the load end. Okay. Then we say the neutral conductor is floating. It could be, so the break could be either at the load side or at the source side. And why it's called floating? Because the supply to load neutral is not connected there's a break that's why it's called as a broken neutral or a disconnected neutral the neutral is disconnected so now what happens this condition causes the voltage to flow to maximum of its phase voltage rms relative to ground otherwise what happens the ground potential is taken as zero right now, if this becomes open, the ground potential also will go up. That is the problem. So in that case, you can have an unbalanced condition. Unbalanced condition. So the effect of disconnection of neutral has a severe impact on the system. And the severity will depend on what type of supply you have, what type of installation, and what load balancing, whether you are balanced the load in all the three Faces R, N, Y, N, B, N. So all of this will determine to what extent the floating neutral affects the system performance. So when the star point of unbalanced load disconnects with respect to the star point of its power source, it leads to unequal voltages across each phase, which also varies according to the load. Supposing, let us say, the load is perfectly balanced. Right. Then 
because if the load is perfectly balanced, the neutral current is anyway zero. So even if, if the neutral gets disconnected, there is no problem. But this does not always happen, right? So if the load is not balanced, then I'll have unequal voltages in each of the phases, right? Because once I tie the supply neutral and load neutral, then the load line to neutral voltage will be exactly equal to the supply line to neutral voltage. But once this is disconnected, then each phase of the load will have different voltages and the system is unbalanced. So as the voltage of such a separated star point varies, it's called as a floating neutral. What does it mean? Just see here. I'll just show here. If See, if this gets disconnected, right, then here at the load end, the voltage between Rn, Yn, and Bn. So these three voltages are different, right? And anyway, this ground has been, this has been disconnected. So this neutral will no longer be at ground potential because of the disconnection, right? So what will happen? The voltage of this neutral with respect to the supply neutral, supposing I denote the supply neutral as N and the load neutral as capital N. So this voltage keeps varying depending on how the load varies. It won't be a constant value. That's why it's called as a floating neutral. So when the, there's another problem which happens, we'll see what it is. When the neutral is disconnected, the current through the loads tends to take alternative paths and the neutral voltage will go up. This can be very dangerous for the equipment and for people operating the equipment. The next figure will show you what it is. Now you see here, this is a healthy system, right? So you see, I have shown three lines here, R, Y, Y is shown here, and B, blue and neutral is shown in black here. So you see here what is done. I have a three-phase load connected here between R, Y, and B. Normally, motors are only three wires. They are not four wires. And I have single-phase loads between R and N, between B and N, and between Y and N. So in a perfectly healthy system, absolutely no problem, right? Even if the load is slightly unbalanced, the supply is balanced, you know? Supply is balanced. So all the loads will get 230 volts because the neutral is connected. So when I tie the supply neutral and the load neutral, there is no issue. Now let's assume that the, you just see here, the neutral is broken here on the supply side. Okay. So since it's broken here, there is this voltage is zero, right? Now where I have I connected this, this load, is connected here. So what will be the path of current here? You can see, uh, wait, let me take a different line because all, I have already a different color. Okay, let me take purple. So you see from here, there's a, there's a disconnection here. So this voltage, see how the current will flow from here and here through the load. And here there's a neutral connection. So from here to here and through this, to this and so on. Are you getting it? This is what is meant by alternative current paths are set up. You can trace trace the circuit, you will know. So now what is the voltage between this? This is, it is no longer line to neutral voltage because this is zero. So the voltage across this will be 440 volts across each of the single phase loads. So you, they're all, you have connected it thinking you will get 230 volts, you're actually getting 440 volts and it will blow off all the equipment will get damaged. So you have to be very careful, right? So floating neutrals can have very adverse impact on the operation of the single phase loads. Now, factors which cause floating neutral. So the one is use of line tap on transformer bushing is one of the main causes. What happens if the nut on the line tap gets dis detached because of vibration, etc or because of heating and melting, then the conductor will melt and will disconnect the neutral. This will happen on the distribution transformer side. 
So this condition may damage the equipment connected to the supply side, whatever you have connected there. Even your protective devices may get impacted. So this is one of the reasons. Then detached overhead neutral conductor, some tree may fall and the neutral wire may cut. Okay. So, for, or maybe there is a sag and there is a storm or a wind and the neutral wire may cut. This is what is meant. Because overhead conductors are exposed to weather. Right? So, simple. A breaking. We have seen so often on the road conductors lying sometimes. So, this causes the supply voltage to float up to line voltage instead of phase voltage. That's what I showed you in the previous figure. So instead of getting 230 volts, the full line to line voltage will come across the single phase. So this leads to damage of the customer equipment. This is the second reason. Next, detached service neutral conductor. So for some reason, load is balanced. Okay, it may get detached from the service side, but it will result in loss of supply at the customer point. Next, you might have high earth resistance. So a low earth resistance will provide a conducting path for the neutral current. Whereas a greater resistance path will give you a greater neutral to ground voltage. So this can also cause maloperation of protective devices. And that voltage will again depend on how much current is flowing through the neutral. This is another reason. Then distribution system overloading along with improper load distribution is another cause for the neutral failure okay so uh, heavy you know heavy load overloaded on one side and lightly loaded on the other side also can cause the neutral conductor to be uh, disconnected today another reason another uh, cause which is not here because this is conventional causes is because of the presence of harmonics. So we saw what is harmonics, right? Uh, in uh, power quality uh, uh, definitions, we will see. You will see. And you've already studied in electronics what is harmonics. Fourier transforms you have done, so you know what is harmonics. So certain harmonics, primarily the triple N harmonics. Triple N means harmonic three, six, nine, all harmonics that are multiples of three. The triple N harmonics will flow through the neutral conductor. Okay. And excessive triple N harmonics, a lot of, will cause a heavy current through the neutral and can cause a neutral burnout, which will again disconnect the neutral. And sometimes maintenance people, they may not connect it properly, lose connections. This may also cause discontinuity of the neutral and, uh, you know, cause of floating neutral. So these are all some of the common causes of floating neutrals. Let's see whether there are some simple remedies for that. We can use a four pole breaker. Normally we have a three pole breaker means the RYB. When the circuit breaker opens, RYB will get disconnected. We can have a four pole. That is a fourth pole in the neutral and we can also have an earth leakage circuit breaker so which will trip the neutral if there is excessive current on the load side it can trip the load and residual circuit breaker this is similar to your OLC, ELCB so these will trip the complete supply when the neutral opens see the problem is if not the neutral opening will cause damage to the equipment the problem is when the neutral opens, if the equipment is stripped, no problem. Are you clear? So the, the entire problem arises when the neutral opens and the equipment is still connected to the supply. So in such cases, the floating neutrals will impact the equipment. But if I, in, if I detect that there is a floating neutral and immediately disconnect the equipment, then the equipment will be safe. So all these are for that a four pole breaker, the ELCB, the RCBO, they're all circuit breakers, which will trip the load when the neutral opens. Next, we can use voltage stabilizers. So due to disconnected neutral in three phase system, loads get disconnected, get connected between phases causing floating 
neutral. That's what we saw, no? Instead of phase to neutral, it will become phase to phase or line to line. So as a result, the voltage will vary and depending on the load value and a voltage stabilizer may protect in such a case, but not always because voltage stabilizers are expensive also, but you can use it with your critical equipment. You have a very expensive TV and yes, you can go in for a voltage stabilizer. Then by proper maintenance, right? So carelessness, you know, don't, don't tighten uh, something, lose, loosely connected wires and so on. So uh, if, we, if we just take a little bit of care during maintenance, the scheduled maintenance, uh, then a lot of problems can be avoided. And uh, uh, people who are doing the maintenance should be properly trained. Okay. So uh, that's the end of this uh, session. So in this session, we first saw how to solve a ring main problem. And I showed you that it's very simple. And secondly, we saw uh, what are the problems with a floating neutral and how we can uh, save our equipment from the impact of floating neutrals. Thank you.